Let's discuss abstract classes in object-oriented programming. We'll walk through the idea and technique of using an abstract class and talk about how to use one, as well as when and why it is advantageous to do so. To get the full feel of this process, we'll use an actual Java program example to help demonstrate this idea. What is an abstract class anyway? Why use one? When should you use one? To answer all of these questions, we need to review what classes are all about. Here are two terms you need to understand, concrete and abstract. A concrete class is one that can be directly created or instantiated and then used. In other words, you can create an object from a concrete class definition. This is a real usable class. An abstract class is one where parts of the class are declared abstract, making the whole class abstract. And this just means that those parts that are abstract are incomplete or not finished. It also means you cannot directly instantiate or create an object from an abstract class. Here is a student class with four instance fields, name, age, list of assignments, and a grade. There are two constructors, one that provides a default student object named Joe, age 15, no assignments, and a call to the calc grade method. In this two-parameter constructor, the name and age are provided, which we assign to the instance fields here with still no assignments and also a call to the calc grade method. The other methods in the class definition are typical set and get methods, the mutators and accessors, those that are used to change the object fields or retrieve them, as well as the toString method to provide meaningful output for the object. Now you might be wondering how a grade can be calculated with no assignments. Well, let's look at the calc grade method. It shows two ways to provide a value to the grade field. First, if there are no assignments, the default grade is 70, which is what happens when a student object is first instantiated with no assignments. However, when there are assignments added to a student object, a straight mean average is calculated by adding up and dividing, as you can see here. Let's check to make sure the student class compiles, and it does. Process completed. Now let's run it using a test class. Here you can see four student objects instantiated, two by default, and two with different names and ages. We put them into an array of students called roster, and then output the roster using a for each loop. We compile it, process completed, and run it. And now you can see the output showing the four students, two of which are named Joe because they were created using the default constructors. To make it a bit more interesting, let's change the last student's name to Amanda, age 14, and try the output again which you can see now has changed accordingly. So far, we have not yet delved into the world of the abstract, but now it's time. Take a look at two new class definitions, one a high school student and another a college student, demonstrated here in the test class. The first two objects are instantiated as high school student objects and the last two as college student objects. They can still be in the student array, since both have inherited the student class, as you can see in these two definitions. However, both have customized or overridden the calc grade method in their own way. Take a careful look. The high school student class calculates a mean average like the student class did, but only after dropping the lowest grade, as you can see in this method definition. Pause the video to study it carefully. The college student class uses a 60-40% weighted average calculation to the grades in the list. Examine this implementation carefully, pausing the video if you need to. Now, since both classes have different ways of calculating the average, neither the same as the original, it makes no sense to define the calc grade method in the original student class. So we can just make the calc grade method abstract in the student class. To do this, we just put the word abstract in front of the method header and remove the implementation section, simply putting a semicolon immediately after the parameter list in the method header. 
We also put the word abstract in the class header, as you can see, and all works as it did before. Now that the student class is abstract, it is incomplete. Any class that inherits the student class is required to complete the abstract portion of the class, in this case, the calc grade method. And there you have a very simple example of how and when to use an abstract class. To summarize, when a concrete class definition, one that can be instantiated as an object, reaches a level of complexity where it is too complicated to define within one class, it's time to break it down by using some inheritance techniques, one of which is the use of an abstract class.